So welcome, 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 our incredible visionary elder leader, community stalwarts, Trevor. We so appreciate your consistent leadership and solidarity. And as always at SETC, we begin all things by acknowledging our creator, by acknowledging the original stewards of the various lands we're on. We acknowledge all our ancestors, all those who toiled without compassion or compensation. We acknowledge all our elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. So Trevor, can you please introduce yourself to our listeners and viewers and share a bit about your remarkable work? Yeah, sure, I'd be, I'd be happy to. So uh, my name is Trevor Charles. I am a professor of biology at University of Waterloo. I've been there for over 25 years. Uh, so I'm a microbiologist. I study bacteria, uh, especially bacterial genetics. And there's a lot of applications in there um, from environment to agriculture to all, all sorts of things, including human health. Um, so in addition to the research that I do in my research lab with the research team there, uh, we also have some companies uh, that bring our uh, microbiological, my, microbiological solutions to the market. Uh, and so we're active in uh, mostly uh, crop agriculture there, uh, but we also provide services. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, we started off the um, Liftoff Black Entrepreneurship Program here in Kitchener, Waterloo, Waterloo Region, Wellington County. Uh, and this is funded through the Federal Black Entrepreneurship Program. Um, and it's really been an amazing experience for us. You know, um, we provide uh, founders uh, with an opportunity to really um, uh, test out their idea, test the market, um, uh, grow uh, and scale. And uh, we have uh, an amazing um, number of coaches and mentors, all of whom have their own businesses and uh, you know, in addition to helping these founders, we're also having an impact on the community in a very positive way. I think many uh, uh, will know that uh, entrepreneurship is is very powerful uh, for social impact, uh, for change, uh, and it's really uh, what, what we need in, in our communities. I couldn't agree more, and we've seen the impact of your work at Lyft. Uh, more importantly, we've seen how you've advocated successfully for an academic institution to play a role in terms of supporting um, Black communities. So once again, I appreciate your, your pioneer, pioneering and visionary leadership and consistency. 25 years, I appreciate all that context. Um, so my next challenge is, what's inspiring you in your work right now? What has you curious or what's keeping you up at nights? Yeah, uh, so what really inspires me is, you know, how can we take what we, uh, the knowledge that we've gained over many, many years, you know, in the science realm, um, with engineering, um, and how can we use that to make the world a better place? And late in life, I've uh, come to understand that in the system that we have, we need to interface with business. Business has to be a critical component for that social change for that social impact. Um, and you have to understand those systems uh, in order to um, in order to, to make that change. How do you make the, the, the world a, a better place, right? Um, uh, you have to first know what the challenges are, right? What are the challenges that you should be addressing? Once you know what those challenges are, you can see whether you can make a business case for addressing those challenges. And that pull through a successful business can really make those changes come true, right? Um, and, and we're talking about um, major changes to society, right? So we, we um, use as sort of our touch bullet points, the uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals. So there's 17 Sustainable Development Goals, all of them touch on um, really what is most impactful, what is most important for us as human society to thrive. And by doing that, any business you have, any, any enterprise that you have, you can map to some of those sustainable development goals. And it will really improve 
not just your bottom line, but it'll improve your impact. I couldn't agree more. When you look at the SDGs and when you look at just uh, the concept of the triple bottom line, people planning and profit, or even quadruple on um, adding that purpose piece, it's so important. And we're in such a time of polarization. We're actually even seeing an ESG pushback and a pushback on some of these common goals that's aligned with the SDGs because the, the concept of ESG yep. is very aligned with the SDGs and we're seeing a yep. pushback from some areas. Of, um, so, so once again, I appreciate your candor and all the context yep. that you provide us and, and your consistent authenticity. So my next question, what challenges and barriers do you face in your work? And what are some of the approaches you and your colleagues take to overcome some of these challenges and barriers, sir? Challenges and barriers? Uh, so I would say that, um, I don't know if it's a challenge or, a, well, maybe this is a challenge. One of the challenges that I see just in general is uh, um, there is often um, an overall lack of um, large scale thinking, right? So, um, you know, and I, I don't know if it's something that we see in, in our communities more than others, but sort of this mindset that is um, not so much a growth mindset, right? So, you know, how can you really make the big changes? Um, you have to take some risk in order to do that. And you have to put yourself on the line. Um, if you are worried about everything, every, I mean, of course you, you have to make sure that you protect yourself, right? Um, but there is a way that you can manage that risk in a way that allows you to take the risk, right? You just have to be aware of what they are. And I've seen uh, so many organizations, so many individuals afraid to step forward because they're afraid that they're gonna fall, right? Falling is not necessarily something that you should be afraid of. I mean, we've all fallen. You fall and you get back up and you're stronger and then you can continue to move forward. Absolutely. One of my my colleagues is a, um, a, me a medical doctor. He always says that bones that break sometimes form mm. back stronger after mm. they've been. So, so yeah, I, absolutely. I think that we, we, we have to learn from lessons um, and, and I appreciate that, that context. So my next question, do you have a set of key priorities right now in your work? Yeah. So my priority, priorities in not my work with entrepreneurs, but my work with my science is really focused on circular bioeconomy. So the idea there is that there's no such thing as a waste product, that every aspect of our waste can be upcycled into something that is of higher value. So we have to sort of change our concept of the whole idea of waste. And when you do that, you really transform how you look at systems. And it's almost sort of, you know, more like a, uh, an ecosystem, right? So with an ecosystem, uh, all of the waste products are used as resources by some other organism. And so we want to incorporate that into our systems. That's incredible. And that regenerative thinking um, mm -hmm. is so important in these times, not just around entrepreneurship, but around all ecosystem developments. It's so funny. We use ecological terms like ecosystems yes. yeah. um, in all these sectors, but then we don't think about re regenerative. We always have waste or think things yep. disappear when mm -hmm. that, that's not how the universe works <laughs> at mm -hmm. all, you know? So, so I couldn't agree more. So my second last question, what is your ultimate goal and what does success look like to you and your colleagues? Being able to thrive simply, right? I mean, that's 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 the thing. I mean, we um, work at so many different things. Um, not all of them are going to be successful, but you're going to get to a point where you're going to be able to thrive. And I would say that's really the simple answer there is, you know, whichever way you can do it. Um, and, and then once you can once you do that, then then you can give back and you can help other people to thrive as well. Ashe, Ashe. We got to lift while we climb. Yeah, it's so important. So my last question, do you have any closing thoughts or calls to action for our listeners and our viewers? Yeah, I, I know that there are many outstanding organizations out there uh, across Canada uh, that uh, people can tap into. 
And I, I'd really encourage you to um, see what's available in your community and, and get involved. Um, you know, you, you never know when uh, you're going to meet somebody who um, you are able to really connect with uh, and um, just go out there and do it. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. We so appreciate your consistency leadership, solidarity, and authenticity, Trevor. I just so appreciate everything that you do for so many. And as always at Setsi, we close the way we began by acknowledging all our ancestors, by acknowledging our creator, by acknowledging the original stewards of the various lands we're on. We acknowledge all our elders and community stalwarts whose shoulders we stand on as we build, share, and learn together for our collective liberation and sovereignty. Thank you so much, sir. So appreciate you. Thank you for the opportunity, Victor.